Steph Nelly here. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Dorothy Bishop, who is a professor of developmental neuropsychology here at University of Oxford. Dorothy's research focuses on trying to understand the nature and causes of language impairments in children. But today we're gonna to learn a little bit more about the trajectory that brought her here. So to start things off, um, Dorothy, would you mind telling us a bit about where you grew up? Sure, um, I grew up in Ilford in Essex. So I'm Essex girl. Um, and I lived in the same house for the first 18 years of my life. So very uneventful childhood in the suburbs um, east of London. Okay. Great. And so how did you get interested in psychology um, growing up in the east of London? Oh, I know. <laughs> well, at school, I was interested in uh, science and biology, I guess. Uh, but I also had this fascination with what made people different from each other. I think that was the thing that still in, intrigues me is why you know different people react differently to the same things. And um, I applied to go to read, uh, in fact, philosophy and physiology in Oxford. So they used to have the PPP degree, which was people typically did philosophy and psychology or psychology and physiology and being difficult. I, I, I actually didn't want to do the psychology bit. And that was because I had actually read a little bit of Freud and Jung and really not liked them. <laughs> and to my mind, this is what psychology was. It was that sort of stuff. And so they, they took me for interview because I, I came from a school which didn't really send people to Oxford and Cambridge. And again, it was a bit of a sort of bloody mindedness. I thought, well, I'll just give this a try. And so you had to sit an entrance exam in those days, which I, I did. And I was rejected outright by Cambridge, who clearly saw no promise in me at all, but also somehow saw a little spark there and they invited me up for interview. And the interview with philosophy was painful um, because I had no idea what philosophy was. Um, and, but they did recognize that I would seem to be rather empirical because whenever they asked me something, I mean, they asked me, how, do you, how would you go about, you know, how do we know that other people experience pain? And I gave this very empirical answer that, well, you know, you'd sort of get a load of people who did and didn't feel pain and you might measure some physiological responses and perhaps, you know, form a criteria. You know, this is clearly not what philosophers want, but they said, well, I don't think you should go and be interviewed in psychology. And so I turned up in the psychology department and was interviewed uh, by the person who at St. Hughes College in those days was the tutor, Gillian Cohen. And she was great because she really just sort of ended up the interview was more her explaining to me what psychology was of me agreeing that this is really what I wanted to do. So it was completely accidental, but Oxford, thank God, had some faith in me. And uh, I started doing psychology with physiology and in the end dropped the physiology. I was in Oxford the first year you could just do experimental psychology. And so after two terms, that's what I did. Very interesting. Yeah, I think sometimes we get the idea that people know exactly what they want to do from the outset. So that's pretty uh, interesting. Uh, I knew the sorts of things that interested me, but what I didn't really know was how they mapped on to the subjects that were available at university. And certainly, I mean, psychology still suffers, I think, from the fact that it, you know, in the popular mind, it, it covers this vast array of stuff ranging from the sort of you know, just sort of books on how to make yourself more successful right through from hardcore neuroscience. And I think that a lot of people don't appreciate <clears throat> that range and that academically you can do quite sensible things in a scientific way and it's still psychology. Awesome, so given that, is there kind of a piece of advice or, or something that you would like to pass along that you picked up along the way? Oh, um, I mean, I think uh, one of the things I, I still have to keep telling myself, one of the things that keeps me engaged with psychology is, is that psychology is to some extent the study of how we think and reason and so on. And what it shows us is how bad we are at really thinking logically and objectively. And so I guess my advice is, you know, n never trust yourself. I mean, there's, there's a popular saying, um, the, royal, the motto of the Royal Society is nullus in verbia, and it's, you know, don't take anybody's word for it. But I think recognizing that you can't even trust your own instincts and that you should always question when you leap to a conclusion, you should sort of step back and try and say, what, what could be wrong with this? I think to my mind, that's the mark of, of a good scientist is that you don't just query other people, but you're continually querying yourself. 
And I think that psychology is great because it allows you not only to do that, but also to study the mental processes that can lead us astray sometimes. Stay curious. I like that one. Well, thank you so much, Dorothy, for your time and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you for inviting me. It's been great fun.